Hey guys and gals, welcome to Touch by Kai, I'm Kai, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this uh, 2D motion graphic in Blender. Um, now, when I was first learning Blender, I did not know how to do this kind of stuff, um, and I just figured it out, uh, and I think I, I, I really want to show it with you. Um, so I'm going to delete, delete the default cube, camera, and light. Hit 1 on our numpad to go to the front facing view, uh, create a camera, and just drag that back. If you're new to Blender... Uh, I'm going to be saying all of the keys I'm going to be pressing, but I will turn on my keystrokes down here. Uh, start the screencast. Boom. So to pan around the grid, that is clicking the middle mouse button. Zooming in, of course, is the scroll wheel. Um, so hitting Z, uh, zero on our numpad, we can go into the camera's view. And we're going to add in a uh, plane. We're going to add in a plane and hit RX90 on our numpad. Hit enter to rotate that 90 degrees on the x-axis axes uh, so we hit tab and and we're you, as you can tell we have these four corners we can we can deal with so we're gonna delete the two on the left hold down control uh, right click to select both of those and hit delete now we can hit delete vertices so now what we have is these two vertices um, now we're gonna move these to the center it's the center of the canvas um, as you can tell, there's that orange dot in the center. That is the center of the object. So uh, I'm going to drag this bottom point up to about right there, which is the center. Uh, close enough to the center anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit tab to get back out of the edit mode for the uh, plane that we have just disfigured into a line. All right, so now I'm going to drag open this, this uh, panel over here, and we're going to actually go to the modifiers tab, and we're going to hit screw. The, what, what screw does is it pretty much just duplicates these vertices all around the edge. So it puts one there, 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 all the way around. Um, but as you can tell, it's there's not a lot of steps. So we need to either decrease this if you want to make a triangle. Um, you could do something like that, and that's pretty cool looking, to be honest. That looks pretty cool. But that's not what we're going for today. Um, put that back on 360 sorry about that all right so we're going for a circle so we're gonna bump this all the way up to 512 really you only need to do something like a hundred but I'm gonna do 512 just because it doesn't lag my computer that much and it really shouldn't lag yours either all right guys I actually just realized I made a bit of a mistake here uh, when I said you have to bump up these steps you also have to bump up the render steps so we're also gonna put that on 512 when I started rendering I realized that it was not very smooth at all as you can tell uh, this is what it should look like right there but when I had it on 16 this is what it looked like so that's the difference make sure this is definitely on 512 or whatever output the steps is on these two are different but it this matters a lot uh, so yeah let's get back to the tutorial now all right so now as you can tell we have a circle not a circle that's you know in 2d motion or anything like that so the way we go about doing this is we we can mess with the angle here we can mess with the actual angle and this is how we get the cool effect now, as I can tell, moving this, it looks a bit like Pac-Man, which is, which is how we're going to animate this. So, we're going to put this back on 360. Excuse me, we're going to put this on 0, actually. We'll put that on 0. The angle is on 0. We're going to go to the first keyframe. I'm going to hit back right here in the timeline to put this on keyframe 0. Go all the way back to keyframe 0, all the way back as far as you possibly can. And then we're going to go over here, hover our cursor over angle, and hit the I button on our keyboard. What this does is it inserts a keyframe of 0. Uh, in our timeline on frame zero, on frame zero, <laughs> zero on zero. Um, so then we're going to go to about frame five, um, and then we're going to type in 300. Type in 300, something like that. Hit I on our keyboard, and then we're going to go to frame. We're we'll go to frame 50. Go to frame 50, and we'll type in 360. Now that is a full circle. We'll hit I on our keyboard once again. Making sure our cursor is hovering over angle, because if you just hit I, it's not going to do that. It's going to ask you something else. So, uh, because our because our circle is full at keyframe 50, we're going to end this on keyframe 50. Uh, actually, you know what? We might, we might do 60. Let's do keyframe 60. Ends on keyframe 60. So now what we have, we play this, is we have this. looks really really cool that's a bit fast now if you want to make it slower of course you just drag out the keyframes so if you want to make this slower what we can do is we can drag open the dope sheet so we're gonna grab this triangle I did that kind of fast sorry about that <laughs> uh, drag this little triangle little weird 
thing down here and just drag that up. Now, uh, then we're going to change this cube, hit that, and we're going to go to Dope Sheet. Uh, this is pretty much the keyframe editor, so you can move these keyframes down here around. I'm going to grab this one keyframe, and let's just drag it to, like, keyframe to, to, to uh, number 20. And now what you can tell what this did is it slowed everything down. But if I want to make it, make, make it faster again, I can just drag this back to keyframe 5. See the difference? I can drag this even closer and pretty much make it pop. Like that. Um, so a really, a really, I, I, I like, I like, uh, I like putting this on something like keyframe, keyframe 10, maybe even 5, like I said before, and then having it finish, uh, finish up. So it kind of smooths into the, the circle like that. I like that. So that is actually pretty much it. That's all you want to do. Uh, a few of the render options, uh, if you want to do 12, if you want to do 19, 20, 10, 80, you can, of course, leave that. Make sure this is on 100% or else it'll render in a weird resolution. So you're going to want to make sure you're down here. Sampled motion blur, uh, because we're in Blender render. Uh, motion samples, make sure that's ticked. Uh, and then we're going to add, we're going to say 12. 12 motion samples. And then we're going to scroll on down to output. Make sure it says H264. Uh, RGB, open the encoding tab, make sure this format says uh, MPEG4. You can use whatever settings you want here. I'm just I'm just giving you a, a, a sense of what I usually use. Pretty much it, you're gonna wanna set an output file, you know, uh, you know, home, the, your name, and then like desktop or videos or wherever this, this video you want to go. Uh, now this is just to render an image. I hit render, render image. So make sure when you hit render, you do not hit render image if you want to actually, you know, finally render this. You want to hit render, render animation. This is what you're going to want to hit if you want to actually see your video uh, as a final product. So this is going to render. Uh, for each frame, it's going to render 12 times. This is because the motion blur. Uh, renders 12 samples down here as you can tell it renders 12 samples which is why I did that now if you don't want motion blur you can untick this and then it'll only render once for every frame the motion blur does look a lot better in my opinion though as you can tell the blurs up here it says blur 8 9 10 11 12 it'll do that every single frame so it'll it'll like I said, it'll render 12 times for each frame that is pretty much gonna be it I'll see you guys in the next video if you're not already subscribed make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed it and you want to see more tutorials just like this make sure it's like button I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.